Well. The Cadillac has returned. Funny, in this day and age, we still get a lot of people saying, how's that ever going to drive over a speed bump? It's got almost all these cars have air suspension. There's a little blast from the past if you know about the TV show. Uh, we did this. Uh, few people uh, really collaborate on this. Uh, it starts off with my friend Dave. You've seen him. Uh, my friend Bill, who I've done all those trucks for, he supplied a Lincoln Mark 7, a complete car that I stripped all these parts out of. Uh, then it went to some fellas who came out from Arizona. They provided a Camaro front suspension clip. Uh, then I got down on this chassis thing, and our friend Heidi, the chooky hand, she came in and helped me weld all the floor pans in. And then Alan, Alan Banuelos. Babco. Check out his channel. He's doing some awesome work with one of my projects. But me and Alan got down on the crazy assembly that you see right here. So quite a bit in the making. And the story is now just about to begin mm -hmm. again. So we had a lot of input on this, but now the story is really just about to begin. Uh, this is just a rough uh, contraption. You know, it drives, but has no brakes, has no interior. Uh, I'm not a fan of the rusted out look, uh, but the good stuff right here, uh, it doesn't have an air cleaner because we haven't really driven it anywhere. I just pulled it around the driveway, but it's got that uh, Lincoln engine. It's basically a Mustang 5.0. I convert it to carburetor. Uh, it's got full air suspension and uh, yeah, automatic transmission, etc. It's all stuffed down in there. and. I'd have to look at the title again, but I'm almost positive it's a 38 Cadillac. So we're going to call it that 37, 38 cab. If you watch the TV show, you saw this beautiful hood ornament of the flying lady. Sad. I still have the pieces, but while we're filming, I saw him <laughs> and the lady went blink. Ew. So I have the pieces. We're going to have to repair that. So yeah, there's always a little heartbreak in every story. Let's talk about um, these back bars. I want to talk about the car as it is right now, and mm. then we'll get into our very special guests we're going to have this week. Well, a little more collaboration. Uh, this fella named Rocky, I think, uh, I don't want to mispronounce his last, his last name, but I'm going to say Flug. Interesting spelling. He uh, owns the Dead Sled Morgue Works. Super Body cool. shop, master fabricator. We're doing this with the roof. Alan and I came up with this kooky idea, and the idea of the hearse, you know, sidebars came up. And Rocky with the dead sled morgue works. He's like, "Hey, bro, hey, bro, I got just what you need." So uh, these are perfect chrome. Just for the TV show, I, I matte blacked them a little bit just to kind of dull it down. You can see it's all just raw, tack welded, rough. So uh, I felt like a really shiny chrome side thing. Kind of took over the whole hearse vibe. I wasn't going for that. I just wanted some trim work. So originally, uh, when Ian was doing this car, I was watching, what was it? Uh, Wednesday on Netflix. And I could totally see Wednesday Adams driving this car to her school. Yeah, this thing has got a vibe. It's so neato. Uh, if you haven't seen the TV show... Um, we section the car body about eight inches. Uh, the Cadillac would have the hood way up here. There's a big side panel that we really radically chopped into and changed. So we also shortened it quite a bit. It was a big four door like the Zephyr, you know, just a big car. So this is the front door. The back door came to about here. And then you had all that ass. You had all the back of the car over here. So the roof line, this is the back window of the the sedan body, I guess. Or is it a coupe because it's a trunk? Uh, hard to say. I don't, I'm not that technical. But this roof was about here. Oh, wow. And it came down to the back window here. 
But then this panel, the trunk, look at, Jamie, I will send you a picture of the 37 Cadillac. The trunk opens this way. So me and Alan just messing around, I was like, hey, let's stand that trunk up. You know, you've probably seen these type of things. This seam right here literally was coming out horizontal. So we did a ton of stuff, obviously. We shortened up the whole back lid and, you know, the joke is, well, what do you even put in the trunk? Maybe you could put a little skinny spare tire under there and just toss something in there. I don't know, it was a concept. And so it sat. Great car, you know, I could have put it on the road, I could have done all the things, but I'm always on to other stuff, you know. I never finish anything, so <laughs> I got sidetracked. Uh, you'll see the interior in a little bit, because that's where things start to get deep. Uh, I got this client. Do you tell? Some of you might know my, my list of clients, and the guy steps in, and he's looking at this, he's like... That is the ugliest car. Actually, he said, Ian, uh, that's the ugliest car I've ever seen. What's it going to take to get that from you? <laughs> I was like, I don't know, man. Let's come up with some kind of trade arrangement. I don't know. He's like, I, I love it. It's so ugly. It just needs a few minor enhancements. <laughs> it's like, I could see it now. This car could be next level, but it needs a few subtle changes. Subtle. And I was like, wait a second, I've heard that line before. He's like, no, no, I'm telling you, it'll just be three easy steps. I said, man, you know, that sounds like this TV show I used to know about, where this guy always told me it was gonna be three easy steps to make this thing like legendary. He said, no, no, this is YouTube now. We could do it any way you want. <laughs> now he's giving me the pep talk. So uh, yeah, I said, you know what, Victor? Oh, wait, did I just give it away? You gave it away. I said, Victor, you got a deal. So he'll be in here this week, but he said, uh, there's one thing I want you to do before I come by. I got all these parts and ideas, but you got to cut that roof off. I was like, what? My pride and joy, my ugliest car moment? He's like, think about it, man. I said, just... On Monday, go in your shop, cut that roof off, and tell me what you think. So I said, yes, sir. Here we go. It's Monday. First, I'm going to take off this visor, because this is a beaut. So this is a funny thing about TV shows. It's all in the camera angle, right? So check out the interior on this. See, with the YouTube, we just own when stuff isn't finished, but this is how we kept the door shut. The tie-down <laughs> strap. Ah! Got a spare battery in there. <laughs> Again, no interior whatsoever. Just a mock-up. Just a raw aluminum racing seat. Uh, one battery on the floor, wires everywhere, a spare battery. You know, just OSHA approved. Real, real good setup. But, you know, that's me wanting to get it done. But, uh, <clears throat> well, when Victor's done with it, though. That's where the story is really going to take Yeah, because his cars, for those of you maybe that are just tuning in, if you watch uh, part one and part two of uh, the tour at Victor's shop, just look and watch those videos and you'll see that's why when he said he wanted this car i was like yeah man because he's gonna finish oh it's gonna be so beautiful what oh. is that visor um looks like an airplane isn't that so cool yeah uh what's the name of it some folks will know i forget the name but it's it's the real deal super super nice this came with the cadillacs thanks dave I'm going to put this where I used to keep the Zephyr grill, in a very safe place. So, uh, yeah, Victor said cut the roof off. <laughs> Doesn't it look weird without the visor? Yeah, it looks so like, back. it looks, uh, the visor really, like, gave us that. Yeah. You know what I'm going to do? Check this out. I'm going to try to talk to Victor about this, because he doesn't want a roof on it. So, uh -huh. a, a car without a roof, but with a visor, it looks a little weird. Huh. Check this out. I just had an idea. I know it's the wrong episode, but we're still using this. Imagine this. 
Ooh. Would it fit? Yeah. You say yeah. That that's the news right there. Mm. I think I'm gonna show this to Victor and he'll be like, yeah, it's yours. Take it back. So the Zephyr has that really kind of falling back windshield too, you know, the streamline, the aerodynamics. So, uh, yeah, we're going to cut this roof off. Probably save the whole roof because it's a great piece of steel. Got a lot of nice shape to it. No dents. I'm not one to get sentimental, but here I am being sentimental. I see that. Well, you know, I like to go back on my work sometimes, but this is a pretty cool look. Kind of. Well, let's cut it. No remorse. So when you cut it, are you going to cut all the way this all the way back, right? That's what he says. But you're going to leave the trunk in place. Nope. The <laughs> trunk's coming off too? Check this out. I don't know what Victor's going to prepare, but let's... Did I ever show you all the ideas he had for the other car? The little uh, cheese biscuit car? No. So, okay. So, just so everyone kind of understands what Ian and I are going through, I never took part in the brainstorming um, things with Ian and Victor ever prior to uh, YouTube. So, that's why I'm asking, like, a lot of questions because this will be my first time working with Victor. I'm excited. And as you know, like that's that's the truth of the matter working with him. He's just like, all right, I like this, but strike, 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 cut, cut this, 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 and we'll rebuild it. It's cool. And a lot of times, yeah. But, but check, the cars are so cool that yeah, he ends up, yeah. So I'm sure Victor's going to have a lot of ideas, but, you know, his main thing was take that roof off. So here we go. There's some gas in the tank, so I'm going to try to make as little sparks as possible for the first part of this, but... I think I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave the top of the windshield intact because we may we may chop the top more on this. Uh, I don't remember how much we chopped it, but see, here's the seam through the windshield, mm -hmm. and this is just again movie magic. That's just plastic. I'm going to make a few marks from the inside. There is a structure inside here. That, you know, like your visors, uh, you know, the sun visors will bolt to. And it's a structural piece, so I'm going to leave all that. You'll see it better once I cut off, but I'm going to mark it by drilling in and up. So we'll have three or more holes that we could trace lines across from. Can I? Oh, never mind. I see what you were saying about getting in and out of this. Yeah. So Jamie just realized what a hassle it is to get in and out of this car. And that's why Victor's like, no, we're taking the roof off. Because it's so low. Imagine just stepping into it. <laughs> like you almost wouldn't need doors. It's so low. Yeah, it's so low. You literally have to crawl into it. <laughs> yeah. I said I was going to. I was like, oh, let me sit in it. And then I said, never mind. It's all about the look. If you know my M.O., my modus operandus, all about what it looks like. Who cares if it even runs, right? Jamie and I were talking. She's like, you know, what if, what if you didn't have to build cars? You know, I'd be like, yeah, I would do sculptures. And that's really what all these cars have been my whole career. You know, they drive around, but... It's not so much the drivability or the cruise control or any of that. It's merely a statement it makes. And usually the statement is, it's pretty weird, dude. It's pretty weird. Fire up that Sawzall and cut some stuff. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
And this is the big thank you to whoever those nice folks were that sent us all those blades. I'm cutting through the sun visor. Fair enough. You don't need no stinking sun visor. See if I can unscrew this sun visor base. It's kind of thick. And I think it's stainless steel. Oh, I see. You gotta give me a hustle. So I cut half of the screw. In half. I was gonna get a big old pry bar. So these are stainless steel and they don't cut as easily as the mild steel. Save these beauties. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Rocky. Those are so beautiful. Maybe you need them back. I don't know. Maybe I'll build a car that can use them again. Oh, that was effortless. All right, let's start that long cut rearward. I don't remember what Alan I put in there, but it seems very strong. And some stress. Abandoned blade. Let me go for the other side. Lots of 
and follow, there's a piece of steel that goes this way. You're going to follow that right into where the old window frame used to be. This is the rear door frame right here. It's quite thick. There's a stainless steel screw right there, of course. See what a blade donation will bring you? All this fun. Just send another pack. Definitely something going on there. Let bypass that. I'm going to take the grinder and make this longer and try to get back on it. Yeah, this doesn't loosen up a little bit. Oh my goodness. Aha! You know one other different thing about the TV show would be? What? I'd have to take this roof off about 16 times. This was literally our first take, all of it. <laughs> oh, you would okay, have... It looks great, so can you put it back on and take it and get off again? You would have your poor back. Ask Alan how many times he took that roof and put it on the car. So this is what you got inside. You can see it's high tech. You got a strap so we could pull it around when it wasn't running. That came out the rear lid. Gas tank, you got your air controls right there. A lot of dust and mud because it's been sitting out in the desert. 
think for now I'm going to leave this structure in. That's putting a decent amount of, uh, well, no, this isn't doing anything. This cross brace sort of is. I'm going to cut all this out. I'm going right down through the trunk. Nothing left. What Victor wants, Victor gets. Heck yes. Let's continue to cut. Grass. So if you're cutting your own car apart, you will deal with that constantly. Just be aware. If it's stressing you out, move somewhere else. It's going to relieve. Abandon that blade for the time being. Move to another part. See that? It's taking the stress out.
is that one heck of a different look or what? When Victor said that, I said, you know what, dude? Look how low the car just got. Well, I love, okay, as you were cutting, let me set these down. I love how this came out. Like, I, I love how that came out, the hips of it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, just like we're experiencing with the bug. So it's on kind of this wagon fetish for a bit, right? We did the Starlux Type 3. You were. We started with the bug that was a wagon, you know, then we got into this. It's like I just think the shooting brake, right? That's what they call that type of a design. So I think I've worked through that. Look at this. Now there's no... You step into the car. And... I mean, knowing what Victor is capable of and what he does and the beauty, like, yeah. All of a sudden, you're not trapped in this little chamber. It's just like, yeah. Wednesday Adams had her chance. It's still sort of like that. It just became, like, totally usable. The car was not usable. Not really. So now you show up somewhere. It's like, okay. It was so hard to get out, but all of a sudden, you're just out. Way easier. Today's Monday. Victor's coming on Thursday. Look at it from this angle. Just use your envisioning tool. Just think about that. Oh, I've already been, yeah. With like a beautiful deluxe sort of a boat tail, maybe. Yep. That's Sky's the I, limit right now. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. It really does bring out the best of those late 30s lines from the Cadillac. Mm -hmm. Instead of that utility style four door, big headroom roof. Now it's just look at, like we're talking about the Zephyr, look at the depth. You know, mm -hmm. it's just so much depth in the sheet metal. It's gorgeous. Yeah, and the back just kind of took away from that. So let's work forwards, make it more better. -er. I got the itch. Let's work on a Volkswagen tomorrow.